this class, we'll be making square A. It starts with a round of double crochet, and then a round of interrupted single crochets, some more double crochets, more single crochets, and then a solid round of double crochets, followed by a final round of single crochet. We'll be talking about gauge, and we'll be learning to read a pattern, both text and chart. It sounds like a lot, but we'll be working together step by step. Let's gather the materials we'll need to make our blanket. You'll need one skein each of Red Heart with Love in hot pink, eggshell, and daffodil. You'll need a crochet hook in the size you'll need to get gauge, and we'll talk about getting gauge in a few minutes, but I used a size K hook. You'll need scissors, a tapestry needle, and a ruler or tape measure for measuring gauge. And of course, you'll need your pattern, which you can download from the material section of the course. Before we start crocheting, let's take a look at the pattern for square A. You'll need the yarn we talked about. Eggshell is going to be color A, hot pink is going to be color B, and daffodil is going to be color C. You'll also need a crochet hook. I'm using a K 10 and a half or 6.5 millimeter. We'll be talking about gauge later. The gauge calls for rounds one through five of the square to equal five inches. That means you have to work rounds one through five of the square. We'll do that together and then measure our gauge. If you aren't on gauge, you'll have to change your hook size. But as I say, I'm using a size K hook. The pattern itself has special techniques which we will refer to when we come to them in the pattern. We don't need to worry about them yet. There are also, of course, abbreviations in any pattern. There's an abbreviations list here. If you see an abbreviation you aren't familiar with, just check over here in the abbreviations list. Abbreviations in crochet patterns are just like abbreviations in recipes. In a recipe, if you see a capital T, you know it means tablespoon, and if you see a lowercase t, you know it means teaspoon, and you don't freak out over that because you know what those abbreviations mean. As you become comfortable with crochet patterns, you'll start recognizing those abbreviations and becoming comfortable with them. So we'll be making square A, beginning with color A, which is the eggshell color. And we'll also be following the text, and I'll be showing you how charts work as well. Let's take a look at the chart and see what all this means. In a crochet symbol chart, every symbol means a specific stitch. So when you see this oval symbol, it means chain. A plus sign means single crochet. This tall stitch with a hash mark in the middle and one across the top means double crochet. So here you would see there's a chain four and a slip stitch, that little dot, and then a chain three and some double crochets. So as we'll work, we'll go back and forth between the text and the chart to figure out what the instructions say. You can use all text or all chart, or I like to use a combination of the two to really understand what's going on. But I'll walk you through each step of the way. Now, all of this can be a little bit overwhelming unless you actually have crochet hook and yarn in hand. So let's get started. Our instructions say with A, chain four, join with slip stitch and first chain to form a ring. On our chart, you can see there are four chain symbols with a little slip stitch symbol. That shows me that I'm going to do four chains and join to that very first chain to form a ring. So the first thing I need to do is make a slip stitch, and I need to leave about a four or five inch tail. I don't want too short a tail there. Make a slip stitch and chain four. One, two, three, four. Now let me say something about how I'm holding the yarn in the hook. As you watch this lesson, you'll see that I may not hold it this way every time. I may be holding it some other way that doesn't look familiar to you. Just hold the hook and the yarn any way you feel comfortable and in control of the yarn tension and manipulating the hook. And of course, if you're left-handed, you're going to be holding the yarn in your right hand and the hook in your left hand. Once I have my four chains, that's one, two, three, four, I don't count the slip stitch and I don't count the loop on the hook. I'm going to go around to the first chain, insert my hook, 
and slip stitch all the way through to form a ring. Now it can be kind of hard to see that, but that ring right there, that center of that ring is where I'm going to be putting the stitches for round one. So on my instructions, round one says to chain three, counts as first double crochet here and throughout. Well, what does that mean? That means that any time that I am having a chain three beginning around, it takes the place of a double crochet. So I'm going to pretend this is a double crochet. Then the instructions say to do 15 double crochets in the ring. Look at the chart. The chart has three chains. There's a one right next to it that tells me it's round one. Three chains, and then it has 15 double crochets in the ring. If you don't believe me, count them. There are 15 double crochets. That means there are actually 16 double crochets in the ring because remember, that chain three counts as a double crochet. So let's put 15 double crochets in the ring. As I work, I'm going to work over this yarn tail. That Remember that tail I left? I'm going to be making sure that it is encapsulated in my stitches. So there's the yarn tail. Double crochet is yarn over. Go in, and notice I'm going in through the center of the ring to pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to complete a double crochet. Do that one more time. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'll do that all the way around to make 15 double crochets. Now, as you work, you'll notice that you start running out of space in the ring. Be careful not to let the feet of the stitch cross over each other. If you need to, you can slide those stitches around and scrunch up their feet because you don't want to be crossing stitches. And if I lose count, I can stop and say, there's my chain three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And look, I need to scrunch those around again. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, do some more scrunching. 14, 15. Let's count. I'm going to count this as a double crochet now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's what I'm supposed to have, a total of 16 double crochets. Now I need to join the last stitch to the first stitch. I'm going to do that with a slip stitch in the top of the chain. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go into the top of the chain and pull a loop through everything. Once I've joined, I need to fasten off. So I'll take my scissors and leave, again, about a four inch tail. You don't want to cut those tails so short that you won't be able to weave them in. And fasten off just means to yarn over and pull that yarn tail through and tighten it. So now I have my first round complete. If any of those stitches seem unfamiliar to you, the chain stitch, the slip stitch, or the double crochet, go reference my Creative Bug Technique classes and brush up on them, and then come back so we can begin round two. Let's take a look at the round two instructions before we start crocheting. The text for round two says, with right side facing, that means we're not going to turn it over. We're always going to be working with the right side facing us. Join B, that is the pink color, with single crochet in any double crochet. And I'll show you what that means, join with single crochet. In any double crochet, then there's an asterisk. It tells us to chain one, skip the next double crochet, single crochet in the next double crochet, chain three, skip next double crochet, single crochet in next double crochet, then repeat from asterisk around, omitting last single crochet. What that means is we'll work from here to here, and then go back to here and repeat that section as many times as we need to, but on the very last repeat of the section, we will leave off that last single crochet. 
and then we'll join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. On the chart, here's what that looks like. Here's the beginning of round two. You'll single crochet in a double crochet, chain one, skip the next double crochet, and notice that's a chain three, but remember it counts as a double crochet. Single crochet in the next double crochet, chain three, skip one double crochet, single crochet in the next double crochet, and so on all the way around. Now you'll notice that round two is blue in the chart. That has nothing to do with the color of the yarn. It's just alternating black and blue, black and blue, so you can tell which round you're on. Again, this makes a lot more sense if you actually have your hook and your yarn in hand and you're doing it. Let's work along together. Join B with single crochet and any double crochet means this. You put a slip knot on your hook. Again, I'm leaving about a four inch tail. And then I insert hook in the indicated stitch is what it says in the special techniques, but I'm just going to pick a stitch and I think I'll just pick that double crochet. I'm going to insert the hook in the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, then yarn over and draw through both loops on hook. You see that I have just done a single crochet. What sometimes is called a standing single crochet because it started with a slip knot on the hook and then you just single crochet into the stitch that the pattern calls for. Then the instructions say to chain one, skip next double crochet. So I'm going to skip that stitch, move my yarn tail out of the way, and single crochet in the next double crochet. Then the pattern says to chain three, one, two, three, skip the next double crochet. And by the way, we're working under both loops of a stitch. So you can see that there's a V there. You want to work under both loops of the stitch unless the pattern says otherwise. So I'm going to skip this stitch and work under both loops of the next stitch. Now the pattern says repeat from asterisk around. So that I go back to the asterisk, chain one, skip the next double crochet, single crochet in the next. Chain three, one, two, three, skip one, single crochet in the next. Time to repeat it again. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain three, skip one, single crochet in the next one. One more repeat. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain three, skip one, and then notice that the instructions say work like that around omitting the last single crochet. Well, normally in the pattern it would say single crochet in the next single crochet, but you already have one there. That was the beginning single crochet. So we're leaving that one out and we'll join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. So just go in under both loops, pull a loop through everything, and then fasten off. So I'll take my scissors and fasten off. At this point, you may be a little worried about these yarn tails. They're a little bit annoying. Don't worry about it. We'll deal with it later. Just ignore them for now. Let's double check what we have here. If you see at the end of round two on the text, it says we have eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have four chain one spaces. That's one, two, three, four. And we have four chain three spaces. One, two, three, four. You can see that those chain three spaces have started forming a square. We started with a circle, but now it's becoming more square-like. Moving on to round three with the text, you'll see that with right side facing, we're going to join C, that's the yellow, with double crochet and first chain one space. We'll learn how to do a join with double crochet or standing double crochet. Then we'll double crochet in the same space, chain one, and then we come to some parentheses. We're getting a little more complex here. In the parentheses, we're going to do that whole thing in the parentheses into the next chain three space. So into one chain three space, we're going to work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. 
then move on, chain one, two double crochet and next chain one space, and we'll repeat that whole thing from the asterisk as many times as you need to, but omitting the last two double crochet. You'll see what I mean when we get to the end of the round. When we're finished, we'll have 12 two double crochet groups, eight chain one spaces, and four chain two spaces. Round three of the chart starts here. There's my standing double crochet, or where I join with a double crochet. I'll put a double crochet in that chain one space, chain one, and then all of this happens within this chain three space. That's two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. You can see exactly where the stitch needs to go because the foot of the stitch is right above the stitch or space that it goes into. Then chain one, skip that single crochet, and put two double crochets in the next chain one space. So you'll work that all the way around, ending with a chain one and a slip stitch in the top of the first double crochet. Beginning with a join with double crochet means put a slip knot on my hook, and I'm going to do a double crochet from wherever I want to, but I'm going to put it into the first chain one space. So here's my first chain one space. I can tell it's the first one because there's my yarn tail. And as I work into spaces, I'm going to be working into the space itself, not into the chain, but into the space. It's actually pretty easy to work into a space. But here I am to do my join with double crochet. I have my slip knot on my hook, yarn over, and then insert my hook into the indicated space in this case, yarn over and draw up a loop. Then I yarn over and draw up a loop through two loops two times. So that's just a double crochet. So I've done one double crochet. Now the instructions say to put another double crochet into the same space. Then chain one, and do all that that's in parentheses into this chain three space. That's two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. I might have to slide them around a little bit. So that all went into that one chain three space. Then I chain one, two double crochets in the next chain one space. And the text instructions say to repeat from asterisk around. So I chain one, two doubles, chain two, two doubles in one space, two doubles in the next space, chain one, do that same corner group here, and notice as I work, when I'm working over into the space and over the pink, look at how the yellow covers the pink chains and just helps the pink single crochets peek out. So you get an interesting color pattern, really only having to work one color at a time. Here I am on my last repeat where I'm putting two doubles, two chains, and two doubles into that space, then chain one. Now, my repeat in my text would say that there was room for two more doubles, but I'm going to omit those last two doubles because I put them there at the beginning of the round. So I end it with a chain one and a slip stitch in the top of that double crochet, and then fasten off. When I finished round two, you can check and make sure you have 12 two double crochet groups, you need to have eight chain one spaces, 
and four chain two spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two double crochet groups. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chain one spaces and one, two, three, four chain two corner spaces. Moving on to round four, you'll need the hot pink yarn again. Let's look at the pattern with right side facing again, right side facing all the time. We're going to join the hot pink with a single crochet in the last chain one space of the previous round. Chain two, single crochet in next chain one space, chain two, there's our asterisk. Three single crochet in next two chain two space, that's the corner, the three single crochets. Then look, there's a bracket. What does that mean? We're going to chain two, single crochet, and next chain one space. There's the end of the bracket. That means we're going to do what's in the bracket two times. Then chain two and repeat from asterisk around. Oh, that's a lot of abbreviations and a lot of punctuation, but you don't have to worry about the overall thing. Just do what it says each step of the way. Do what it says to the first comma, then go back. Do what it says to the next comma. So go to each punctuation mark and do that tiny little bit until you can see the overall picture of what's developing. You'll just keep repeating that around, but the last part of the repeat will be three single crochets in the last chain two space and a chain two. Of course, we'll do this together. On the chart, there's the beginning of round four. So you can see there's a single crochet in a chain one space. And then rather than worrying about the repeats, let's look at the overall view of what's going on. You have chain twos over the two double crochets. You have a single crochet in the chain one space. There's another chain two. You have three singles in the corner space. And you can see you have single crochets in each chain one space, three single crochets in each corner space, and chain twos separating all of them. So I need to start my pink yarn with a join with single crochet. There's my slip knot. There's the last chain one space of the previous round. So I'm going to single crochet into that. Then chain two. Single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain two. Then three single crochet. One two, three in the corner. Then here I am at the bracket, chain two, single crochet in next chain one space. And I do that again, chain two, single crochet in the next chain one space. Then it's time to chain two and repeat from asterisk around. Or as we saw in the chart, I'm just putting three single crochets in each corner space followed by a chain two, chain two, single crochet in the chain one space, chain two, three singles in the corner space, chain two, single in the chain one space, chain two, and I'm ending that round with three single crochets in the last chain two space, chain two, and join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. When I finished, I have 20 single crochets and 12 chain spaces. Let me fasten off. And you can see I've got a lot of chain spaces here separated by the single crochets, and the chain three groups. Round five gives us a bit of a breather because really it's just a plain double crochet round in every chain space and in every single crochet. But we have to do a few increases. Let's look at the pattern. Round five tells me to join my eggshell yarn with a double crochet in any chain two space. That really means I can start anywhere that's a chain two space. Double crochet in the same space then double crochet evenly around, working a double crochet in each single crochet, three double crochet in the center stitch of each corner, and two double crochets in each chain two space. 
Looking at the chart, here's the beginning of round five. We have two double crochets in that chain two space, a double crochet in the single crochet, then two double crochets in the chain two space, a double crochet in the single, and then three double crochets in that corner. Remember back on round four when we had three single crochets in the corner and it said corner made? There's your center stitch of the corner and you're going to put three double crochets in that center stitch of the corner. Working around, you can see that you have a double crochet in each single crochet, two double crochets in each chain two space, and three double crochets in each corner stitch all the way around until you join with a slip stitch at the end of the round. We'll start with that standing double crochet or join with double crochet in any chain two space. Now the chart shows it starting up here at the beginning of the round, but I maybe want to move my end of the round just so I don't end up with so many yarn tails here. So I'm just going to pick another chain two space. So I'll do my standing double crochet or join with double crochet. And I'm putting two double crochets in each chain two space. I'm putting one double crochet in a single crochet. And then here I am at another chain two space, so that gets two doubles. And then a single and then two doubles. And you can see that the white is covering the pink in the chain spaces and letting the single crochets peek out. Here I am at my corner. I'm going to do one double crochet in the first one, but here I am at the corner stitch. I'm putting three double crochets in the same stitch. How do I do that? Just one, then two. I go right back into the very same stitch. Two, three. You can see their legs are all squeezed in, into one stitch, but their heads are all spreading out around the corner. And then I need to put one more in that third single crochet. And now here I am again at a chain two space, so I need two doubles. Let me show you what I'm going to do with this yarn tail now that we're at the beginning of the round. I need to put a double crochet into this first single crochet stitch, but I'm going to catch the yarn tail under the base of my double crochet as I work. So I'm just going to catch that in there as I work that double crochet. And then do the same thing as I work the two double crochets into this chain space. You can see I'm just catching that yarn tail for as long as I can. There I am going to do it one more time. So that's helping me weave it in, but I really don't want to do all the entire tail. I'm going to leave that tail out and come back and weave it in better later. So I'm just working around. There's a double in the first single crochet of the corner, three doubles in the corner stitch and then one double in the third stitch of that corner. Keep working all the way around. And here I am at the end and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. and fasten off. And I just about ran out of yarn here, so you really want to leave a longer tail than that. That's really not a long enough tail. When you finished, you should have 52 stitches. It's always a good idea to stop and count because it can be really easy to make a mistake and better to find the mistake now rather than later on. Now it's time to check our gauge because we finished rounds one through five. Take your tape measure or ruler and measure across the width of the square. You can see I'm just a tad over five inches here, but that's pretty close. I'm, if I'm measuring from edge to edge, it's really right at five inches. That's where you want to be if you want to make the same size blanket that I made. Now, if your gauge is a little bit tighter, you're going to want a larger hook 
or if your gauge is a little bit looser, you're going to want a smaller hook. Now you may say it doesn't really matter, this is a baby blanket, I don't really care what size it ends up being. And that's fine, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One is, you may not have enough yarn if you're using a different gauge. You may have to buy another skein or two of yarn if your gauge is different. Also keep in mind the way the fabric feels. If it's too tight or too dense, which is actually something that happens with a lot of crocheters, you're not going to have something that feels good next to your skin and certainly not something that you want to have next to a baby. You want it to feel soft and flexible so you can wrap that lovely baby in it and not have it stiff as a board. If it's too loose, it's going to be too holy and those little fingers will poke through. So you want a nice flexible fabric that's neither too tight nor too loose. If you get this gauge with this yarn, you'll be fine. But if you're using a different yarn or different gauge, keep that in mind so that you are making the best possible blanket for your treasured baby. Round six is pretty straightforward. We're going to join the pink or B with a single crochet in any double crochet and just single crochet in every stitch around, putting three single crochets in the center stitch of each corner. On the chart, it looks like this. There you see a single crochet in every single stitch and three single crochets in the corner stitch all the way around. Before we get started actually crocheting round six, make sure you have your five inch square. If you had to change hook sizes, you need to go back to the beginning and make a square for rounds one through five so that we have the same size square and then you'll continue using that hook throughout the rest of the squares. We'll start with a single crochet in any stitch. I'm just going to randomly pick a stitch and just single crochet around. This should feel pretty comfortable by this point. Make sure that you identify the corner stitch. There's my three double crochet corner there's the stitch that's in the actual corner. That's where I'm going to put three single crochets. So one, two, three. Another place that can get kind of confusing is where you have that slip stitch. You want to make sure that the end of the round you're just working into the top of the stitch and you're not working into that slip stitch. You don't want to add a stitch to something. So you work into the top of the stitch. Then I'm going to catch that yarn tail underneath here. And this one's so short, it's, there's not much to catch. I should have left a longer tail there, but I just was about to run out of yarn and I didn't want to have to start a new one. Here I am coming up to the corner. If you think you're going to have trouble recognizing the corner, you might want to identify it first and put a marker in it. But I can really see that that's my corner stitch. The more you can read your crochet and understand what's going on, the less reliant you'll be on, pat on the pattern and you'll be able to understand more if there's a mistake in the pattern. At the same time, you don't want to rely only on guessing what you're supposed to be doing. You really want to be able to read the pattern as well because you might be guessing wrong. So understanding how to read a pattern and how to read your crochet are both important tools to have in your toolbox. Here I am at my last stitch and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. and fasten off. And here's my beautiful square. I need to show you how to weave in the ends. I'll admit that weaving in ends is not my favorite part of crochet, but I've had an attitude adjustment about it over the years, and I realized that weaving in ends well and securely is really part of the process of making a beautiful crocheted piece. Let's talk about how to do that. Of course, you have this mess. So let's just take them one at a time. And you'll remember on this first yarn tail, we got some of the yarn 
caught underneath this first round of stitches, but that's not really enough to make it secure. I can tell that it's going this way. I want to weave my yarn back in using my tapestry needle. I'm going to weave it back in the other direction under these stitches. And then if I have enough yarn left, I might weave it back in the other direction. That really makes it more secure. And when I finished with that, I can trim it close to the edge. You really want to be careful not to cut your stitches. Well, here's another white tail. And I need to figure out a place to weave that in. Now, I need to do more than just say under those, that pink stitch. That wouldn't be enough. And I don't want to go under this pink stitch because there's too much space there. The tail will, will be visible. So I'm just going to go under the back of some of these double crochet stitches in a couple of different directions. I might go like this. And I might go like this. I'm really trying to weave invisibly but securely under these stitches. I don't want it to be seen from the front. And you notice I'm sort of going back and forth. I don't want it to all go in one direction. I'll show you why that is in a few minutes. Alright, a pink one. A little more difficult because we don't have as much solid pink fabric to work behind. You generally want to work with this, the stitch and the yarn. You want to weave into the same color. But I think I can work under these yellow stitches here. Maybe go under here. That's not going to be enough. I need to go back in the other direction. Oops. So I'll keep doing that. In this case, I don't want to go under the same stitches. I wove that one in this direction. I think I'm going to work this one in this direction. Maybe I'll go under here. So it's just sort of a matter of deciding what's going to be most invisible and then taking your time to really do it securely. And I'm doing all this from the back, but maybe every now and then I want to check and make sure those ends aren't showing up on the front. Let me show you what happens though if I don't weave in in both directions. Do you remember when we caught that pink yarn tail? You can see actually that's where we encapsulated that yarn tail, and I said I didn't want to go all the way around here. Let me show you what would have happened if I'd gone all the way around. I'm just going to keep weaving in the same direction. So now that pink tail is just going straight there. Well, here's what's going to happen. If I trimmed that, I think, well, that's pretty good. That's about an inch and a half. As I wash this blanket and use it, it's going to start stretching. And as I use it, can you see what's happening to my tail? Look, it was over here, now it's over here. It's going to start working its way out. And look, and now all I have left is this little tail. It wasn't woven insecurely and it's coming out. If you have made blankets and have your yarn tails coming out, it's probably because you didn't leave long enough tails or you didn't weave them in securely. So you want to take your three or your four or five inch tail and go under and then at the very least go back in the other direction and maybe even back once more. That will help keep that tail in place. Go ahead and weave in all your yarn tails on this square and make 12 other squares just like this. Now, if you want to try some different color variations, that's okay. Let me show you some of the other variations I played with when I was trying to design this blanket. You see, I played a lot with these when I was trying to decide on exactly which squares and what color variations I wanted to use. Here I have one that has two rounds of white and an outside round of yellow. Here I have alternating but beginning with the yellow. So the 
opposite of what we just made. Here's one that's more pink and a little bit of yellow. And here's one that's more yellow with a little bit of pink and a little bit of white. You may decide you like one of these better or you want to try all of them. Just keep in mind that if you're changing and using a different color combination from what I used for the pattern, you may need more yarn in one or more colors. When you have all 13 square A's complete, come back and join me for the next class where we'll be working on square B.